Tenko Hacks, a podcast about wellness, health, and biohacking. So in this episode, um, uh, Dr. Serenova and I will cover um, cover senescent cells. Uh, Dr. Serenova, we just discussed previously um, senescent cells and its connection to NAD+. And mm-hmm. I know that your, one of your expertise is in senescent cells. Would you like to elaborate a bit more what senescent cells are and their connection to longevity and aging? Senescent cells are basically the cells that are um, not divided anymore. So they're just um, standing there in our tissues. They're secreting a bunch of, um, uh, of uh, in- inflammatory signals. And uh, they are the zombie cells that don't have um, a certain function anymore. And senescent cells are being accumulated with aging. And this is actually what causes inflammation and more specifically what we call inflammaging. So it's it's the um, age-related inflammation, basically. And this is where um, autoimmune diseases are coming, rheumatoid arthritis, things like that. Um, so they have quite a big involvement in this, um, in this topic. So I know that uh, it's very interesting for your audience to know about, you know, different tips on how to basically detox from SNES and cells. And I thought to just share my personal protocol because I'm also interested in making sure that my tissues are uh, remaining youthful because when you have accumulation of your SNES and cells, they will be secreting those those nasty inflammatory signals, including CD38, by the way, which is um, consuming energy. NAD and it is competing with your sirtuin genes for your NAD reserves. And this means that then sirtuins don't have enough fuel in order to do their work and in order to repair your DNA and, and, and do a bunch of other useful stuff. So for me personally, I know that there are people that um, are taking quercetin and fisetin um, on a daily basis, but I actually um, choose to have a detox protocol that I do for five uh, days a month. And uh, what I do is I take 2.5 grams of quercetin per day for five days. And this is actually quite a high dosage because usually when people supplement with quercetin, uh, they just go for something like four or 500 um, mg per day. But with this high dosage, you actually make sure that um, you're, you're getting all of your senescent cells out. And if you do this for five days um, a month, this can be very beneficial. And from what I've noticed is that, uh, first of all, it's giving me a headache during these days, but um, it's okay because I don't mind if, you know, if I get the beneficial effects, but I definitely feel better afterwards. And I, uh, I make sure that I do this every month and I keep on repeating it in order to, um, you know, to basically get rid of the senescent cells. Not only that, but uh, I also try and combine sauna um, during these days with the quercetin treatment. And if I can't get into a sauna for, you know, for five days um, a month when I'm doing my quercetin um, clearance protocol, I'm taking very hot showers. So, you know, the, the hottest it can get, like I'll do this. Uh, because this also helps with the process and this is a very good uh, detox process you can implement and uh, in addition to that something else that I'm doing for uh, I've been doing for years that that hot shower sorry sauna is it to activate your heat shock protein is that why why you are doing that Yeah, that's exactly right. that because it's a it's a stress signal for the body and it basically activates uh, your detox processes as well. Uh, so really useful for autophagy, really useful for activating your sirtuins and also for getting rid of the senescent cells for sure. Right. So mm-hmm. interesting. So you during this five period, five days per month um, mm-hmm. of, of, of period, you are basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, maximizing or you are increasing the stress mm-hmm. level to the body mm-hmm. to activate those detox pathway mm-hmm. and to to basically kill off some of the senescent cells yes so that's why how, how you are doing your yeah protocol course. that's and... make that's a fascinating actually protocol yeah Mm-hmm. If someone wants to try it, uh, they are welcome to try it. And, you know, maybe they can comment below the video and let us know how, how it went for them. Um, 
they can do it for a couple of times and then they can actually add something else that I'm also doing uh, from time to time. And this will be quite a strong detox. So I wouldn't recommend doing the whole thing um, at once. So first do the quercetin. The next time you're doing it, do the sauna and the, the hot showers. The third time you're doing it, you can also add something else to the mix. And what it is, is another supplement called chlorella. Uh, which is basically uh, also um, known in, in traditional Chinese medicine um, for, uh, for its um, uh, detox properties. And it's known for cleansing the blood. So you're combining those and then you have a very nice cleansing protocol you can, um, you can basically do yourself at home. That's that's a uh, that's a uh, fascinating. So I actually had an interview with um, with Catherine Aniston, who has a company to cr- create Corella, Corella and um, and uh, Aspirina products. So their company creates only those two products. And and um, I didn't actually think about um, uh, Corella. Uh, I have been actually taking Corella da- daily myself because it is also very big in Japan. Um, yeah. It's an algae product. But mm-hmm. I, I didn't really think about connection between Corella and uh, and uh, tenescent cells. You are actually the first one who mentioned such a connection. So that's very fascinating um, protocol you shared uh, with us generously. Um, so um, sen- besides the headache during those five days, <laughs> have you noticed any? So because one of the things I think people, I think so many people are fascinated about autophagy. That's such a hot topic. But one of the things people keep asking is, how can I measure? So because self-quantification is also a very important part of you know, many biohackers. But how can we actually measure, or if we can measure autophagy or levels of autophagy or senescent cells in mm-hmm. our body? That's uh, one of the, I think, very um, important questions. Um, maybe, of course, if you go to a top level lab in, at the university, of course, you can measure such like with biopsy and but without having to go through such a um, torture. Is there any way you can uh, subject, uh, quantify? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So uh, when we have cells in the lab, it's very easy to measure autophagy. But unfortunately, at the moment, uh, and you know, without going into biopsies and things like that, and even then, I actually, I'm actually not sure how efficient it would be to do this. Um, there is an indirect measure um, for autophagy. So what you can do is you can measure your blood glucose. And then you can also measure your ketone bodies. So both of those can be uh, done uh, with a prick of a finger. And then there is this index that is being generated, um, the the glucose ketone index. So you're basically dividing your your blood glucose to your ketone levels, and then you get a number. So for example, let's say your blood sugar is, uh, your blood glucose is 100, and then your ketones are uh, 1.5. So 100 divided by 1.5, it's uh, 6, 66.6. Uh, and this is your, your, your glucose ketone index. So you ideally, uh, when you're fasting, you're, um, you will be having your, um, your blood glucose though, and you will also be having um, rising concentrations of, uh, of your ketone bodies. And, and then you get this, um, this kind of number. So any Indication below 80 um, kind of shows you that you're probably in autophagy. There is a good chance of autophagy. If the number is under 40, then this means that you have a very good probability of being in autophagy. And also you probably are having some sort of an immune repair going on and so on. And um, and, and then under 20, uh, it's very, very hard to achieve. You should be fasting for, for probably three, four or five days to achieve this kind of a low number. But then you have a complete clearance um, of, you know, intracellular toxins um, and uh, again, fasting by itself might, might not be even enough to achieve this low number. So you might be uh, needing to supplement with exogenous ketones with like MCT oils and so on. Mm. Okay, fantastic. I didn't know about this um, ketone or gl- blood glucose uh, ketone ratio. And uh, that's actually quite achievable, quite doable at home. I do have... Um, 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 blood, blood glucose monitor and ketone, so it's just different stri- uh, strips. So um, that's definitely doable. So thank you very much. I would I would put that formula you mentioned. So it's basically a blood glucose in, um, in milligram in deciliter, 
Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's 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 a unit, right? Because some people yeah, use we'll, uh, minimal, uh, we'll, like we'll in, in with this slide yeah. for our subscribers for sure. Yeah, yep. conversion. Great. That um, yeah, that yeah. Thank you. That uh, that would be very helpful. And anything else you'd like to add about the topic of senescent cells, Dr. Teranova? No, I think we covered it pretty well. I'm actually pretty um, uh, interested in seeing what your subscribers will say about this and what the audience will say, because that's actually the first time I'm sharing this protocol. And I'm actually curious about more people trying it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we really encourage people to give us feedback. And if notice, say some people try it and notice some changes um, but um just those information you shared um i'm sure is super helpful for me and for many of the audiences i hope 